behold, a profound revelation from the mystic Neville Goddard himself. He unveils the true nature of our existence, a grand, eternal drama unfolding before our very eyes, a simulation of the divine plan for redemption. Neville speaks of the Christian mystery, the crucifixion and resurrection of God, not as mere historical events, but as a symbolic representation of the journey each of us must undertake. For the God, the Christ, the Lord spoken of in Scripture, is not some distant deity, but the very essence of our own being, the immortal spirit that lies dormant within, awaiting its awakening. Neville guides us through the layers of this cosmic play revealing the skull as the sacred tomb in which the divine slumbers, only to be resurrected and birthed anew. He likens this to the Lord's Prayer, where the kingdom must be being restored, an ongoing, eternal process of reclaiming our rightful place as the sons of God. This is not a simple linear event, but a continual unfolding of the divine plan, a perpetual drama that has been playing out since the dawn of time. We, the children of the divine, have descended into this world of flesh and blood, penetrating and annexing the brains of these mortal vessels. In doing so, we have subjected ourselves to the full spectrum of human experience, the joys and sorrows, the triumphs and tribulations. Yet, this was not a mere accident, but a necessary step in the grand plan of redemption. It is through the crucible of this earthly existence that we are forged and refined, shedding the limitations of our mortal coil and awakening to the truth of our divine nature. Neville speaks of the scripture, foretelling this journey, how Abraham rejoiced in seeing the day of the Lord, for he knew that the sons of God would one day be raised to the level of the divine Father but this could only be achieved by passing through the crucible of this world, shedding the garment of flesh and blood, and being born from above, awakening to the truth of our divine nature within the very recesses of our skull. As Neville recounts his own experiences, he shares the profound realization that death is but an illusion, a mere transformation of consciousness. He encounters his former secretary, Jack, who had passed on, only to find him very much alive and unaware of his own transition. For in the world beyond the veil, there is no death, only a restoration to the youthful vitality that was once ours. This revelation shatters the common misconceptions about the finality of death, opening our eyes to the continuous, ever, evolving nature of existence. Neville laments the state of the modern churches, where the faithful gather not in pursuit of true spiritual awakening, but to display their finery and maintain the illusion of a separate, individualized existence. He reminds us that the kingdom of God is not some distant realm, but a state of being that can only be attained through the inward journey of self-discovery. The pomp and circumstance of organized religion he suggests, have obscured the true essence of the spiritual path, leading many astray from the transformative power of the divine spark within. The great drama of life, Neville explains, is not a linear progression, but an eternal, cyclical play that we have been performing for eons. It is only when we awaken within the dream when we recognize the true nature of this simulation, that we can begin to consciously shape our experience, manifesting the desires of our heart through the power of imagination and unwavering faith. This revelation empowers us to take an active role in the unfolding of our own destiny, no longer mere pawns in the game, but the directors of the cosmic play Neville's words echo the wisdom of the ancient hermetic teachings, where the mastery of the mind and the gift of speech are the keys to unlocking the immortal within. For it is only when we have transcended the deep programming of this simulated reality 
that we can truly receive the promise, the glorious birthing of the Divine Spirit within our own being. This process is not a simple one, requiring the shedding of layers of illusion and the cultivation of an unwavering faith in the power of the imagination to shape our reality. The story of Joseph, Neville's friend who had recently passed, serves as a poignant reminder that not all are ready to embrace the mystical truth. Some are content to remain in the dream, reveling in the pleasures of the physical form until the hunger for the word of God becomes too great to ignore. And it is then, at the end of the journey, that the scriptures will unfold within them and they will recognize the Christ that has been slumbering within all along. This serves as a testament to the diverse paths that lead to the ultimate awakening. Each soul moving at its own pace and in its own time. Neville's teachings remind us that we are not mere spectators in this grand cosmic play, but the central actors the very embodiment of the divine plan. Our crucifixion, our burial, and our resurrection are not historical events, but the lived experience of each and every one of us, unfolding in the depths of our own consciousness. We are the living, breathing manifestation of the Christian mystery, the symbolic representation of the journey that each soul must undertake to reclaim its rightful place as a child of the divine. As we ponder Neville's words, we are challenged to shed the illusions of this world, to transcend the trappings of the simulation, and to awaken to the truth of our divine nature. For in doing so, we not only liberate ourselves, but we become the living, breathing manifestation of the kingdom of God, a kingdom that is not out there, but within the very fabric of our being. This realization is not merely an intellectual exercise, but a profound transformation of consciousness that ripples outward, shaping the very fabric of reality itself. The journey may not be an easy one, fraught with the challenges and sorrows of the human condition. But Neville assures us that the ultimate prize, the consummation of our bliss, awaits those who persist in their faith, who dare to dream boldly, and who surrender to the transformative power of the divine spark with it. This is not a promise of some distant, heavenly reward, but a lived experience of the divine, made manifest in the here and now, a state of being that transcends the limitations of the physical world. So let us heed the call of the mystic and embark on this extraordinary adventure, shedding the shackles of our limited perspectives and embracing the boundless potential that lies dormant in the depths of our consciousness. For in doing so, we not only fulfill the promise of our own redemption, but we become the living, breathing manifestation of the divine plan, the co-creators of a new reality that transcends the boundaries of this simulated existence. The transformation that Neville speaks of is not a solitary endeavor, but a collective awakening, a symphony of souls rising to their full potential and reclaiming their rightful place as the children of the divine. Together, we weave the tapestry of a new world, a world where the kingdom of God is not a distant dream, but a tangible reality, a world where the immortal spirit shines forth in all its glory, illuminating the path for those still slumbering in the dream. Let us then take up the mantle of our divine inheritance and embrace the power of our imaginations to shape the world anew. Let us cast off the trappings of the simulation, the false idols and the empty promises of a world in thrall to its own illusions, and let us instead turn our gaze inward to the wellspring of the divine that lies at the very core of our being, and let it flow forth, 
transforming not only ourselves, but the very fabric of reality itself. For in the end, we are not mere spectators, but the authors of our own destiny, the co-creators of a new and wondrous world. And as we awaken to this truth, as we step into the fullness of our divine potential, we shall see the world with new eyes, and the world shall see the divine reflected in us, the living embodiment of the promise that has been whispered through the ages. Let us then embrace this calling and become the living, breathing manifestation of the kingdom of God, here and now, forevermore.